taking body measurements. All body measurements should be taken over desired undergarments or body suit. It is helpful to have another person assist in taking measurements. A cord or tape should be fastened securely around the waist and left until all measurements are taken. For the high bust measurement, bring the tape around the body, under the arms, but above the bust line. The tape should be snug, but not tight. Check that the tape is parallel to the floor across the back. To measure the full bust, bring tape around the body over the fullest part of the bust line. Again, making sure that the tape is parallel to the floor across the back. Front waist length is measured by placing the end of the tape at the base of the neck in front and bringing it to the bottom of the waistline tape. Back waist length is measured by placing the end of the tape at the base of the neck and back and measuring to the bottom of the waistline tape. One way to measure the distance to the bust point is to place the tape at the center of back neck. Bring it over the shoulder, hugging the neck, and then straight down to the bust point. Finally, the shoulder length is measured from the base of the neck to the shoulder end, or to the point where a set and sleeve would be placed. Record these measurements for future reference. To measure the waist, bring the tape around the waistline. This should be the smallest part of the torso. The tape should be snug, but not tight. The hip measurement is taken at the fullest part of the hip. This location will vary from one individual to the next. Check that the tape is parallel to the floor. Record this measurement, but also mark on the body near the side seam where this measurement was taken. Then measure from the bottom of the waistline tape to the place where the full hip measurement was taken. This is called the hip depth. Another useful measurement is the high hip circumference taken three inches below the waistline. Measure around the body at this point, keeping the tape parallel to the floor. This measurement is helpful to determine the correct shape for the side seam on skirts and pants. To determine the skirt length, measure from the bottom of the waist tape to the desired length near the center front. Of these measurements, the bust, waist, hip, and back waist lengths are used to determine figure type and pattern size. To measure the upper arm circumference, first bend the arm slightly, then measure around the fullest part of the upper arm. The arm length is recorded as two separate measurements, first from the end of the shoulder to the elbow, and then the total length measurement taken over a slightly bent arm to just below the wrist bone. Bending the hand slightly helps in locating this point. Finally, wrist circumference is measured around the wrist just below the wrist bone. Remember that you must add ease to your personal measurements when comparing them to the pattern. Altering pattern bust size. This alteration is made on the bodice front only. Alter the width for the bodice back first, as that will affect the total bust circumference, and change the amount of alteration needed on the front. First, draw some guidelines on your pattern. Draw a line through the center of the waist fitting dart and the bust fitting dart. The point where these two lines intersect is called the bust point. Then draw a line from the bust point to a position on the armhole near the notch. Slash through the center of the waist fitting dart to the bust point. 
Continue slashing to but not through the armhole seam. Slash just to the stitching line. Then clip the armhole seam allowance to that same point, but do not completely separate the pattern. Slash the center of the bust fitting dart to but not through the bust point. Spread the dart so that the distance measured at the bust point equals one half of the amount of the increase needed in the front. Spread the same amount at the waist. This spread also increases the size of the bust fitting dart. Notice that at all times the pattern remains flat. Locate the tip of the new dart in the center of the spread and redraw dart lines to the new dart point. When this alteration is made on a pattern, it is a good idea to test the pattern in some inexpensive material, as it may require some further adjustments. It really is difficult to work on a pattern on a flat surface and to know exactly how well the alteration will work when made up in fabric. Notice that when increasing the front darts, the distance from the shoulder to the bust point becomes longer, thus the dart becomes lower. Fold the dart and perfect the seam lines. When increasing the darts, you usually have to lengthen the center front seam in order to make a smooth waistline seam. By cutting off the excess paper with the dart folded, you get the correct shaping to the end of the dart. To decrease the bust dart, you slash the pattern in the same way as for increasing, but you will lap the pattern one half the needed amount instead of spreading it as we did before. The amount of lap at the bottom of the dart is the same as at the top. This alteration will decrease the size of both fitting darts. The dart lines will need to be redrawn and the center front shortened to even up the waistline. Altering pattern hip size. Minor alterations of less than one half inch can be done by adjusting the seam allowance. Alterations of over one half inch should be done within the pattern by slashing and spreading. Hip alterations are usually made near the side seam between the dart and the side seam. First draw a line parallel to the grain line from the bottom of the pattern to the waistline seam. Draw a horizontal line to the side seam at the fullest part of the hip. This waist to hip measurement should be taken at the time you are recording your measurements. Slash along these lines to but not through the waistline seam and to the side seam. This second slash at the hip line is necessary in order to be able to spread the pattern an even amount from the hip to the hemline. In order for the pattern to remain flat while spreading, you must also clip through the seam allowance at the same two points. Be sure to clip only to the seam line so the pattern will still be connected at these two points. Spread the vertical slash the needed amount at the hip line and continue spreading the same amount to the hemline. Mark this amount on a separate sheet of paper and then tape the pattern to the paper. Notice that the spread decreases to nothing at the waistline. When the figure is balanced in front and back, both front and back pattern pieces are altered by adding one-fourth the total amount needed to each pattern. Remember to spread the pattern an even amount from the hip line to the hem line in order to maintain the shape of the original pattern. This alteration shortens the side section, so to correct the hemline, add the needed amount to the side section to make a smooth hemline. If there is a sharp curve or bulge at the side seam in the hip area, it can be made smoother by redrawing the seam line. This same procedure would be repeated on the back pattern piece. When a pattern needs to be decreased through the hip area, the pattern is first slashed in the same manner as above, but is lapped rather than spread. Draw a line parallel to the slash line, indicating the amount to be decreased. Lap the pattern the same amount at the hip and at the hemline. Tape in place. 
The excess length created at the hemline in the section near the side seam can be trimmed off to even up the hemline. Altering pattern sleeve length and circumference. Body measurements taken from the shoulder to the elbow and from the shoulder to the wrist are used in altering sleeve length. Alterations may be made above or below the elbow. To shorten the upper sleeve, first draw a line parallel to the alteration line indicating the amount of the alteration. Then fold along the alteration line and bring the folded edge up to the marked line. This makes a pleat that equals one half the amount of decrease needed. To determine the amount of change needed, compare your shoulder to elbow measurement to the pattern measurement by actually measuring the pattern. The seam lanes may need to be corrected following the alteration. Lengthening must be done by slashing and spreading. Cut the pattern apart along the alteration line above the elbow. On a separate sheet of paper, draw two parallel lines indicating the amount of lengthening. Also draw a line perpendicular to these two lines, which will aid in lining up the grain line on the two sleeve pieces. Tape the top section to the paper, matching the grain line markings. Position the lower section, lining it up with the lower line and again matching the grain lines. Recheck the sleeve length from the top of the sleeve cap to the elbow position, and then continue on to the wrist. If the total sleeve length requires further adjustment, alter in the same way on the line between the elbow and the bottom of the sleeve. Complete the alteration by redrawing the sleeve seam lines. When a fitted sleeve does not provide adequate ease through the upper arm, it should be increased. This measurement should equal your upper arm circumference plus two to three inches of ease. Before slashing the pattern, trace the cutting lines of the sleeve cap onto another sheet of paper. This will be used later. On the sleeve pattern, draw a line parallel to the grain line from the top of the sleeve cap to the sleeve hem. There should also be a line drawn across the pattern at the widest part of the sleeve. Slash on the vertical line through the hem up to the top of the sleeve. However, be careful not to cut through the seam allowance. Slash on the horizontal line, which we will call the cap line, being careful not to cut through the seam allowance. In order for the pattern to remain flat by spreading, you must also clip through the seam allowance at these three points. Be sure to clip only to the seam line so the pattern will still be connected at these points. Place the sleeve pattern on top of the tracing, which was made earlier, matching the two cap line markings. Spread the sleeve pattern measuring the amount of increase at the cap line. On this pattern, we are tapering the amount of increase to nothing at the wrist. If it is necessary to increase the wrist, it can be done at the same time by continuing to spread the pattern through the sleeve hem. This alteration decreases the height of the sleeve cap. So use the tracing of the sleeve cap as the new seam line to restore the original sleeve cap shape. Draw a new cap line from underarm to underarm. Draw a new grain line marking, making it perpendicular to the cap line.
The alteration to decrease the sleeve circumference is done much the same way as increasing, except the pattern is lapped instead of spread. The mark on the cap line indicates the amount of lap. The sleeve may be lapped only in the area of the cap line, or it may be lapped an even amount through the sleeve hem. Since decreasing the sleeve circumference increases the cap height, the tracing of the original sleeve cap is used to determine the amount to be removed from the top of the sleeve cap, so it will resemble the original sleeve pattern. The top of the sleeve cap would be trimmed using the new line as the cutting line. Fitting Pants Patterns Before taking measurements for altering pants patterns, tie a string or tape securely around the waistline. Measurements and alterations should be done in the following sequence, as one alteration may affect the measurement for the next one. The first measurement to take is crotch depth. To take this measurement, sit erect on a hard flat surface and measure the curve the size of the body from the waistline to the flat surface. To find the crotch line on the pattern, draw a line perpendicular to the grain line at the widest part of the pants leg. Measure the pattern at the side seam from the waist to the drawn crotch line. Add at least one half inch to the body crotch depth measurement when comparing to the pattern measurement. This mark indicates the amount the pattern needs to be shortened. When there is a difference in the two measurements, adjust both front and back pattern pieces at the alteration line marked on the pattern. To shorten the pattern, take a horizontal pleat in the pattern. To lengthen the pattern, you would slash and spread the pattern the desired amount. Remember, this alteration must be done to both front and back The hip measurement can be taken next. Measure around the fullest part of the hip, keeping the tape parallel to the floor. Check the placement on the back as well to be sure that the tape is still parallel to the floor. Record this measurement, then mark the location on the body where this measurement was taken. Then measure from the waist to the pin marking to determine hip depth. On the pattern, measure down from the waist this amount and mark the pattern. This is the hip line. Lap front and back pattern pieces at the hip line, matching the seam lines. Pin the two pieces together. Measure across the pattern at the hip level. Remember not to include the seam allowance in your measurement. Since this is only half the pattern, double this measurement to determine the total pattern hip measurement. The thigh circumference measurement is taken at the fullest part of the leg. Add at least two inches ease to this measurement when comparing it to the pattern measurement. Before measuring the pattern, pin the front and back together along the inseam, matching the seam lines. Measure across the pattern to determine the pattern measurement. Remember that ease must be added to the body measurement when comparing the two measurements. If the thigh area needs to be decreased, it can be taken off from the inseam. Usually half the amount is taken off the front and half from the back seam. Taper the alteration to nothing at the knee. 
If the seam line is curved, you may use a French curve to help draw the new seam line. If the thigh area needs to be increased, add an equal amount to the front and back patterns at the inseam, tapering the increase to nothing at the knee. The crotch length measurement is taken from the front waist tape between the legs to the back waist tape. Add one and one half inches of ease to this measurement when comparing it to the pattern. To measure the pattern, pin the front and back pattern pieces together, matching the inseam seam lines. Measure the crotch seam line from front to back. Do not include the seam allowance in the measurement. Stand the tape on edge when measuring the curved areas. Remember to add about one and one half inches ease to the body measurement when comparing the two measurements. The alteration can be made to the front or back depending on body proportion and shape. If the figure is large or small in back, adjust only the back. This alteration is usually made by slashing horizontally from the crotch seam to the side seam along the alteration line. Spread the pattern in this area the necessary amount. If the amount needed is large, some of the alteration can be added at the inseam.